So this is the VST that we're going to be using today. It's called Drummerzon. It's by D16 Group. And it's a software emulation of a, of a classic drum machine, the Roland TR909. If you're familiar with it, um, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're not, you will be familiar with it because you'll have heard the sound of the TR909 in countless tracks across the last three decades. Now, this device is a VST. It will run inside your DAW. But let's open it up in Ableton Live and have a look, have a look at it, see what it looks like. So here's Ableton Live. I've actually already loaded it into the first track here. If you go down to the instance of Drummers On in Live here and click on the little spanner tool, we'll be able to see the VST interface. And here it looks very much like the top panel of the TR909. We've got a selection of drum sounds here, bass drum, snare drum, toms, rim shot, clap, hat sounds and cymbal sounds. And underneath each of those sounds, we've got a selection of parameters that enable us to change and control those sounds. Now, in order to do that, though, we're going to have to use the mouse and the keyboard to click on these knobs and faders and move them around. And that's quite limiting and is the reason why we're going to look at how to map all of those to this external piece of hardware, this external MIDI controller, to enable us to access those controls more easily and hopefully make the whole process of using this VST more fun. Now, before we go any further with this, the first thing we need to do is check that we've got some sound. Now, this is um, this Drummers On instance has been put onto a MIDI track, and because the Push 2 is active, this track is in a kind of live preview mode, which means any MIDI information that's coming in, be it from the Push or from anywhere else, i.e. the Akai, should be sent to that VST, the Drummers On. So let's just check with the Push. Yeah, so the push, is, the push is outputting notes, and those notes are being picked up by drummers on, and we're hearing the sounds. Now, with the Akai MPD here, the basic drum mapping, the basic mapping of these pads, or the output of these pads, is a standard uh, generic notes. So this should also correlate with the sounds and the note numbers for the drummers on. So let's just check that out. There's the kick, snare, rim shot clap and so forth. Now what you'll notice if you're paying attention is that kick, rim shot, snare, clap. If we look at the VST itself over here that's not the order that these sounds appear in. We've got bass drum, snare drum, low tom, mid tom. Not that's a massive problem but it's a, it's a consideration that needs to be held in mind as we move forward so that we can make a control device, we can make a control template if you like, that makes sense both in live and in the real world. So what we need to do is somehow enable us to make sure that we're locating the sounds in the right place and that we're associating the correct controllers with those pads in an intuitive way. So the first thing we're going to do is a little trick here. We're going to go down to the drummers on device and we're going to right click and group it. We're going to open up this new instrument rack that we've created and underneath the drummers on where it says to drop instruments or samples we're going to drop an instance of Ableton Live's drum rack. When we do that you'll notice a couple of things. First of all the push over here responded We've gone out of your classic uh, chromatic note mode and we're actually, although you can't see it, we're now actually in the standard drum programming mode. The reason we can't see it is because this drum rack currently doesn't have anything in it. So although we can select the different pads here and you'll see the corresponding pad highlighting on the push two, we're not actually got any sounds loaded in there so we're not seeing any color or content on here. What we should also see when we press the pads on the Akai is that the corresponding pads on the push are also highlighting. And that's great. That means that everything is speaking the same language and all the notes are in the right places. The next thing we need to do is to add a little bit of colour to this so that we can locate the sounds again and that it will help us to use the template more effectively. Now the, the method that I like to use for this is to add an empty piece of audio. Empty audio clip. Now I have an empty audio clip here saved in my user library because they're quite useful to have. 
and I'm going to drop this first empty clip into the drum rack cell one here and I'm going to rename it kick because I know on this pad we've got the kick. If I hit it here we can see it lighting up in live, we can see it playing on the push here and if I move along to the next pad you'll notice that the first pad on the push here now has colour and on the inside live here it's now labelled kick. I'm going to mute this drum rack chain here within the instrument rack because although these are empty clips and there's no sound in them, I definitely don't want any incidental random sounds or noises coming from the drum rack. This is simply a means of getting the correct display up on the push and in a bit you'll also see that that enables us to use the standard drum program or drum sequencing tools within the push. So this is kind of an, addend an, add an addendum to that information. <coughs> so what we need to do now is label up these other, uh, these other cells in the drum rack here so that again we can make sense of it going forward. Now I'm just going to copy these over and rename them as I go. So this is the rim shot, this is the snare, this is the clap. And then the next row, got another snare, but that's actually triggering the same snare. You'll notice in the drummers on here, there's a little MIDI indicator, so it's showing us which sample is being, or which sound is being triggered. And because that's identical, I'm not really that bothered about replicating it. Next one is the low tom. So let's stick a little empty clip in there and rename all that low tom. Then we've got closed hi-hat. Oh. And then we've got mid tom. No, that's low tom again, sorry. <clears throat> then we've got oh, another closed hat, mid tom. Now we're going to ignore the mid tom and the high tom, as I explained earlier. We've only got eight, um, eight faders up here and eight knobs. We could use banks to extend that controller ability, but we're going to keep it simple for this example. So I'm ignoring the mid tom, the high tom, and the crash symbol. But so the next one here we've got that's, that's uh, unique is the open hi-hat. So that's on this cell here. Let's copy this up and label that one open hat. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the final one is going to be the ride, which is which is up here in the top right. So let's copy this over and label that ride. So you can see the, the drum grid here in the drum rack is showing me the position of the notes and it's showing me the sequence that those sounds occur in in most drum machines under sort of generic drum note, note positions. We can also, using the push over here, we can add colour to that. If we wanted to, we can change the colour of these various sounds by holding down the shift button, pressing the note and assigning a colour to it. And that makes it obviously look nicer makes it easier to locate particular types of sounds within, um, within a preset. Okay, so now that we've got sound coming through, we've got our pads set up so that we can preview these sounds, what we need to be able to do next is to change some of the parameters within Drummers On. We need to set up some mapping to the faders and knobs on the Akai here.